interview you on the 50 yard staying out of, <laughs> staying out of the shade <laughs> got to get you guys in this that was classic you look at the, the seals on seal beach Cows, the cows in Boston? Laying Boston. out, yeah, right. exactly. The Laying out in the sun, I like it, I like it. Good stuff. It is a little colder here in the shade, though, for sure. Yeah. It's a, it's a lot we colder here in the shade, let's, let's, yeah. let's be real. <laughs> well, it's, I got out of my office for a couple minutes. It feels good, fresh air feels good. So. Yeah, we asked, we've asked about Blake piece by piece so many yeah. times this season, but he kind of has bumps back each time there was that moment of adversity. What? What have you liked about his ability to do that or seen him do? Listen, I, I told all three guys, Blake, Lou, and, and Zach after the game, I thought we had one of our best practice weeks last week was, as far as the operation goes. Um, listen, I know I know sometimes it, it sounds like coach speak and all that, but like I, I say things like work in prog progress and you know it's a process and it, it really is. You know, when you when you take a deep dive on 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 rookie kickers, um, there's 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 very few guys that have ever come come into this league and not experienced some type of you know peak and valley type of thing. I think the thing that Blake has going for him is he's got a really good mindset. Um, he he's not overreacting uh, with any of the any of the misses or, or bad you know bad hits. Um, you know we've dissected all those things. Uh, he's a very good self corrector, meaning uh, there's some kickers that miss a kick and may not know why. He's, he can give you instantaneous feedback on all the little nuances with kicking. Um, and so uh, I think I think his personality really uh, has helped him with that, meaning not the overreaction, where they kind of get back to work. But um, but again, you know, new snapper, new holder, you know, another a rookie rookie holder. And I think I mentioned this last week, you know, when you look at those operations throughout the league, you know, rookie snapper rook, or rookie holder, rookie kicker, there's sometimes going to be some of those that unevenness and some inconsistency. So, kudos to him. Uh, but right back at it this week. So, um, but I kind of, I kind of believe, you know, like the field goal he missed the prior week. I've never really seen him hit a ball like that before. So you knew there was something kind of odd about about that situation. And so, uh, he's just really done a great job, just kind of getting back on track every week and just you know, kind of keeping the, not looking at the big picture, just kind of keeping the focus, you know, the small focus in front of him. So, kudos to him. JT had that penalty early in the game. Pump blocks are kind of weird. It's like, okay, you, you're, you get the ball, it's not a penalty. You miss by an inch, it's a penalty. What, what's the coaching point there on, you know, that risk or reward of going yeah. for it? Yeah. Well, the interesting part about that one is, if you noticed, he kind of half rolled uh, to his left, yeah. the lefty punter, like we did the week before. Their guy didn't get called for a penalty. We did. So that's a whole other subject. But. Um, when you when we when we coach up, if you hear like an OTA's training camp, we do like, we'll do punt block circuits. There is an art to, to blocking a punt, a little bit different than blocking a kick. Um, when we teach blocking a punt, we're really trying to take the ball off the punter's foot, if you will. It's not you really don't want to have your hands over your head. You really want to have your hands together, not apart. You see you know, how many times if you come go to a game, you see a, a ball go between someone's hands or they're over their head and they miss it or trying to swat at it. So. The other part of that is taking an angle through the block spot so that if you do miss, you don't make contact with the punter. You know, uh, probably went under the radar, but the week before, Nephi, uh, before the block punt, had an, an earlier rep where he just missed. It kind of went underneath the, the punter's leg. And so the angle through the block spot is very, very important. You know, most fans wouldn't realize how quick that operation is. You really only have two seconds. The average snap to punt time in the NFL is two seconds. And you got to go 10 yards in two seconds, and so there's really not a lot of time for false steps, false, uh, you know, technique. So it's something that we work on. Uh, JT's obviously blocked punts before. Uh, I just think it was one of those bang bang plays that you know, kind of the cost of doing business. He had a really good rush and just missed. So it is what it is. Do you think he was outside the tackle box on that punt? Well, the way the rule reads is rugby style punt. It doesn't really okay. doesn't really net, uh, distinguish it inside the tackle box. So he's on the move. So again, I'm, I'm not. I'm going to get myself in trouble. I'm going to stay away from that one. Because so. I, don't, I don't know how many times in your career you've had like a maybe like a somewhat viral moment. Cameras catching you doing things. You get a lot of reaction from friends, family, colleagues. With the uh... I don't know why I'm such a mild mannered guy. So I, don't, I can't understand why that why that is. Um, you know. Hey, listen. I, I guess I'm a guy that wears my heart on my sleeve. I'd like to have fun doing it. I love fun coaching. You know, when you do this doing this for a long time now and and uh the players you know we're asking these guys to, to to work very very hard every day and we try to keep it light and have fun with them as well and and i think there's a part of that um obviously uh you know uh, 
the, the, the thing this past week was a, um, I didn't realize that my, my high school t-shirt was going to get so much attention. Um, I expect a nice Christmas present from Rod, by the way, for the million views, but that's a side note. Um, <laughs> but uh, I was, somebody else told me to say that, by the way, that wasn't original. Um, but all kidding aside, I didn't realize, you know, I've given my alma mater a little bit of love and, and a little side note is for you guys as well is that Lou Headley's fiance is an Italian from New York. So we had a little moment there, a little Italian moment there after the nice pun. So it was kind of a apropos for the for the moment there. So, um, but yeah, but uh, no, just uh, having fun while we're while we're working hard. That's all. So a little little fun moment and a little shout out to my high school. So all good. It's cold as hell. <laughs> <laughs> come on, come on, oh, Nick. Man, I gotta go walk. <laughs> I mean, you got the get-up going. No, man, you got the hoodie. Also, I'll let you guys get back in Seal Beach. You guys are good. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate it.